So it's been a while, seven months since I last made a video on this inbred console. It's been too long, and as I was thinking of what video to make on the Wii U, I thought to myself, why not make another homebrew overview? So here we are. Wii U homebrew is underrated and seriously overlooked, and the Wii U gets overshadowed by the original Wii's modding scene, and now it's overshadowed by the 3DS even more so, I'd argue. So to bring this topic to more people's attention, this video is made. The Wii U modding scene exists, and if you have a Wii U and haven't jailbroken it for whatever reason, I highly suggest doing so. Hopefully this video will convince you to. By now you probably know the drill. Starting off with quality of life mods, then we'll go over some emulators, then some unofficial ports, and finally game mods. Let's get started. Starting off simple, we've got our loader. Yes, Tiramisu, the free Wii U custom firmware, does already disable the region lock. Still, I'm willing to bet not all of you use Tiramisu, so to be safe, I'll include the mod link in the description, just for the off chance that one of you are using some obscure custom firmware that doesn't disable the region lock. I want, or more accurately, need to mention this now before we get into some other homebrew. The Homebrew App Store allows you to install homebrew applications directly to your console. Think Universal Updater from the 3DS before Wii U. It's super convenient and probably the most well-known application on this list outside of Whoop Installer GX2. Whoop Installer installs, wouldn't you know, Whoops onto your Wii U home screen. If you don't know what Whoops are, they're basically these folders that contain all the data to install apps. Think CIA Files is on 3DS for Wii U. They're basically APK files that allow the consoles to install apps and games directly onto the home screen, and with Disk2 app, you can back up your disk games into what format and install them onto the home screen as if you bought them from the eShop using WEP installer. If you're confused yet want to do this, don't worry, I've linked a pretty good guide in the description. Sadly, Disk2 app does not work with Tiramisu. It works with Mocha, another popular custom firmware for Wii U, which is why WUD exists. It serves the same purpose as Disk2 app, before the Tiramisu custom firmware. And it doesn't back up games into what format. It backs up the games into WUD format, as the name implies, or as the Wii U.hacks.guide tutorial instructs, you can dump the game into a .app format and install it that way via WUP installer. If you're yet again confused, don't worry, I'm just bad at explaining things. I've linked the guide in the description along with all relevant homebrew. Next up, we got FTPIIU. Would you believe me if I told you it's a file transfer protocol? Yeah, the name's self-explanatory. FTPIIU lets you wirelessly transfer files to your Wii U's SD card, just in case you don't know what an FTP is. Savevine, or Save I I N E, is a save file manager for Wii U. It allows you to back up and restore your save files to and from your computer. It's a simple yet useful application. SD Caffeine is another really cool application on Wii U. It essentially allows you to mod almost every game with whatever random stuff you find on Game Banana. Now moving on to emulators. Now, this next piece of homebrew isn't really an emulator, but it fits best in this section. I'm talking about Nintendo. If you're in the Wii modding scene, you'll know that this is, well, a piece of homebrew for the Wii that allows you to play GameCube games and use other controllers. So why am I talking about this in a Wii U video? Simply put, you can hack your Wii U's virtual Wii and install Nintendo on that and then get the Nintendo forwarder on your Wii U to play GameCube games on the gamepad screen. This is really cool, especially considering the GameCube and Wii U gamepad both run at the same resolution, so the games don't look all that out of place. You are missing out on the analog triggers, which kinda sucks, but some GameCube games are perfectly playable without them. Next up we got SNES 9X, an emulator for, what you know, the SNES. In case you can't tell, I really like SNES 9X. I've talked about its different ports like three times now, it's been ported to almost every modern Nintendo console, and it performs really well. It might seem a little redundant due to what I'm going to talk about next, however, as you'll see, it still has its use. If you're active in the 3DS modding scene, I can almost guarantee you've heard of Virtual Console Injects. Virtual Console is Nintendo's way of reselling their classic titles on the now-dead eShop. They basically made a bunch of official emulators and sold off their old games via that. But oddly, they didn't bring over every first party game from their old consoles despite it being totally possible, as proven by various homebrew applications. Ultimate Wii U Virtual Console Injector allows you to inject ROMs into installable WUPs that act as Virtual Console re-releases. You can use this to emulate games from the DS, GBA, N64, NES, SNES, TurboGrafx, and MSX. And you can even play Wii and GameCube games via this. I still find it very odd that the Wii was part of the Wii U's virtual console library, considering the Wii U is already backwards compatible with the Wii, but I'm not complaining. Some FX chip games from the Super Nintendo don't run, 
and that's where SNES 9X comes in, so it doesn't really matter. Every game I've tried ran at either full speed or really close to that. There are a few compatibility issues, but that's to be expected. A really neat piece of homebrew in case you don't want to install a widget with <laughs> Retro Arch. Oh, yeah, Retro Arch has also been ported to the Wii U. I personally hate Retro Arch. The whole idea of it is nice. An all one emulator would be great, but there are a ton of issues and just things you have to mess with in order to get certain games running at all. Like, it's just a mess. It's not plug-and-play type of software at all. I don't even bother with this anymore since I could just inject any and all ROMs I want into a virtual console and get a better experience anyway. But as always, the link is in the description. Now moving on to unofficial ports. I'll admit, there aren't as many unofficial ports for Wii U as I expected. And that can be attributed to the fact that Wii U Homebrew just isn't as popular as Wii or 3DS Homebrew. But there are some ports I've scavenged up. GTA 3 has been ported to the Wii U. It runs pretty much full speed, and the game's fully playable. It can be installed onto the home screen or ran via the homebrew launcher. To absolutely no one's surprise, Doom is here. It looks really clear, and that was like the main objective for the mod developer, to make the game look crispy. It's called Crispy Doom. Doom runs and looks great here, not much else to say. Sonic Mania has been ported to the Wii U, and while I'm at it with Sonic, Sonic 1, 2, and CD ports also exist for Wii U. WiiUBrew.org lists a bunch of recreations of classic games for the Wii U, including Asteroids, Flappy Bird, Jez Ball, Pong, Pac-Man, Snake, and Tic-Tac-Toe. But outside of these ports, I wasn't able to find much. I mean, sure, there was a port of some obscure indie Japanese RPG, but I haven't been able to re-find it. I lost it. Continuing on to game mods. To be honest, I just want to get this one out of the way. CTGPU has the audacity to call itself a CTGP mod, yet it's been abandoned and the courses suck. It exists, it's just not that great. I can't really blame the developers, however. I'm sure CTGPU Deluxe totally overshadows this, just as Mario Kart 8 Deluxe does for the original game. Tari Terry on Game Banana ported a bunch of tour courses in Mario Kart 8. There's also been a whole lot of booster course past the tracks ported. The Wii U's second best game has some noteworthy mods too. Mario Maker has a new Super Mario Bros. Wii mod that transforms the new Super Mario Bros. U game style into the older Wii style. There's also a mod for a Metroid-themed game style that seems pretty cool. There are a lot of mods for new Super Mario Bros. U, a lot of which being surprisingly high quality, but the one that I want to get into right now is Cloudy New Super Mario Bros. 2. It's only called 2 because, as the developer said, it's more of a second attempt at the first one, so it's not like you need to go back and play the first one, this is kind of just a remake. I really like this mod. I'm not gonna lie to you, I haven't beaten the entire thing, but I've played through a good amount of the levels, and they're really cool. I can't suggest this mod enough. Smash Bros for Wii U isn't safe either, and by not safe, I mean HOLY CRAP THERE'S SO MANY MODS FOR THIS GAME. Everything from custom characters to custom stages can be found on Game Banana, and this video would be over 10 hours long if I went over literally everything, so I highly, HIGHLY suggest just searching around on the site and seeing what seems cool for yourself. You're bound to find something. All this homebrew talk isn't considering the fact that pretty much all of the original Wii's homebrew is compatible with the Wii U via its virtual console. So, if you're on the fence about picking up an OG Wii versus a Wii U in 2023, I think you should 100% just go for the Wii U, as long as you're planning to use it semi-frequently in order to avoid that NAND failure flaw that is. They go for about the same price, which surprised me. In conclusion, if you have a Wii U, or you're planning to purchase one in 2023 for whatever reason, I highly suggest modding it. The Wii U homebrew scene, whilst not nearly as widespread as the original Wii or 3DS's, is pretty robust and shouldn't be overlooked. If you have enjoyed this video and that subscribe button is white, you're doing it wrong, click it to make it gray. Maybe check out one of my other videos, and if not, have a nice day.